all fellers we back at the lake in and uh boy it's I'm tickled to death to be here. Uh ain't nothing like pulling up at the lake in, I tell you now. So we here at bowling's tonight and uh fishing six to eleven, I think it's twenty five every thirty. And uh a five dollar rodeo ever uh ever hour. So it'd be five five dollar rodeos in twenty five minutes uh, uh twenty five every thirty minutes. One of my favorite lakes to fish. Uh, ain't been since summer. So uh, we'll sit down with them and uh, we'll rub elbows with them and we'll wet a hook and let's see if old bugle mouth will take a hanker and to like what we're throwing him and pull on it. Let's go fishing. All right, fellow old Jimbo, Team Country Boys Outdoors. We've been out in the water about 15 minutes, maybe 20. Got settled in. Start the camera up. So let's go fish and see what happens. All right, we are into it then, and uh, ain't nothing but a couple of bites. The biggest thing that's caught that that ire was 10.6. That won that five dollar rodeo. So pretty slow across the lake, best I can tell. But uh, we'll stay at it. What?
Well, you fellers can see I'm a sitting in here in the truck in. Got two hours left of fishing. I ain't had the first pull. Uh, three bites. Guarantee if you add up all three bites, as far as where the flag's at the water and how far mo up it moved in, I guarantee you they ain't moved six inches combined. Don't know if it's this cold front that's pushed in. I knew it was a coming. I I, I had an idea that they liable to, to feed up a little bit right smart before the front moved in. I don't know if the front's pushed in earlier than I had heard on the news or if they just ain't biting like I figured they'd bite or what. But it's it's not just me. It's the, it's these uh, 13 of us fishing. And there's really about one fish being caught every 30 minutes. And and if you catch a fish, why then you, you're probably going to win that 30-minute spot. And if it's a decent enough fish, you're liable to win the rodeo for the hour. Uh, I think 18 even, the biggest thing been caught, and the rest of it's been 10, 12, 14 pounds, uh, 7 pounds, one of 30 minutes, I mean. So this ain't the way I wanted my first fall and winter episode to turn out, but we still got two hours, a little under two hours, about an hour and 55 minutes left, and then, you know, no different than the summer or the spring or whatever. You stay at it and you keep fishing. You got to fish conditions. But, uh, you know, I always tell you, I'm going to post a good and I'm going to post a bad and uh, lo upload it whether it's good or not. But we're going to hang on to some hope that we want to pull it. And you can see I'm sitting in my truck, yonder my rods. <clears throat> Some of the best chow I've ever made. The most confidence I've ever had pulling up with a bucket of chow in my truck. That was just a 10 4 wave yonder. But, but most confident I've ever been in my chow, which ain't saying much in one aspect on the count of. I struggle hard with it. That's my weakness. But it's saying a lot in one aspect because sometimes I couldn't even get my child to break while you'd let it sit out there in the air and reel it in and still be on the hook. But this child's done really good. Now if the fish just cooperate where I can kind of gauge, you know, how good is it. But I thought I'd hit you right quick on the count there ain't been no action to show. And uh, I'm going to stop recording here and, and uh, sit here and fish some more. Hey Jimbo, Team Country Boys Outdoors. Struggling at the lake. What's going on everybody? Jimbo, Team Country Boys Outdoors coming to you. Uh, it's about 1.45 in the afternoon, Friday. Probably the worst, boringest video you ever seen there. That's why it's short, but uh, nothing to show you. Uh, you know that one part where I'm sitting in the truck and I'd had three bites I think it was and about the last hour and a half I think I told you I had an hour and fifty something minutes left sitting in the truck in and the last hour and twenty minutes hour and thirty minutes I had probably six times as many bites as I had the whole first two and a half three hours combined uh just never got a pull though but uh you know that's the way it goes sometimes but there's more important issues and that's why i put in the uh description to stay tuned to the end and i'm sitting in my truck right now but i'm gonna get out i'm gonna stop the video i'm gonna get out and then i'm gonna show you what's happening i thought all the way home last night about why i didn't do no good what happened what could i have done better uh, i was up to 5 45 this morning trying to figure out what I could have done better. I couldn't sleep. That's not the only reason, but just one thing then another, but I spent a lot of time wondering. I think sometimes that's why I'm successful is I spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to get better. And then it dawned on me the day when I got up 
this could have played a role in, in what I'm about to show you. This could have played a role in it. I, I don't know. But it's not the end of the world that I didn't catch any fish and didn't win any spots, or didn't win a rodeo, or didn't hit a jug. Or what. There's a fire burning up yonder about Lake Lure, Chimney Rock area. What spread out about over a thousand acres or approaching a thousand acres. I think at 1.30 I seen it was 970, uh, 29 or 79, I don't remember. Close to a thousand. And uh, that's about an hour from my house. It's jumped containment over the past day or two. And it's down to South Mountain State Park, which is about 25, 30 minutes from my house. Matter of fact, when you, in one of those videos where we fishing at HUDs, uh, that's right at the foot of South Mountain State Park, so it's not too far. Um, but today, it's very visible how close it is, and that's what I'm going to show you. There's a lot of people being displaced by this wildfire burning. Uh, they can't get it contained. We've, I think this is the 35th day we ain't had a drop of rain to speak of. Everything's bone dry. Low humidity, been windy. Just everything you can think of for a perfect recipe for wildfires are burning. So catching fish or not catching fish becomes, you know, a first world problem when you're dealing with things like this. We hope that they can contain it. We pray for all these farmen. Uh, we ask that you pray for us here in Western North Carolina. Uh, all the people up there in the mountains, just right up the road yonder. I don't live far from the mountains. And uh, hope they can get this under control and the good Lord can send us a good notion of rain. But I've looked and 10 days out and the best, well, I think 10% was the best chance I've seen. So I'm going to stop the video, get out and start filming. I just want you to look. This is real close to my house and I'll end the video going home. You'll see exactly how close it is. And this is what it looks like in our whole town today. All right, so I'm just going to do a pan. And and this is, this is the smoke and it, this is a haze of smoke coming from that far, yonder. This is how close it is, and I'm, when you when I get back in the truck, Yonder, you'll see how far it away from my house it is. And we hope they can get it under control and get it contained first and foremost for them folks what lives up Yonder. If they can keep their home and their property and stuff, and don't lose their life, livelihood, or their life. God forbid that happen. This is just what it looks like, and I hope these cameras are picking it up. But it's a pretty day outside, but you can't tell on account of the right smart of smoke what's rolling in here. It's about 70 degrees, but I'm riding around with the air conditioner on on account of it's too smoky to roll down the window, and we under an air quality alert for people to have breathing problems or whatnot. So I can't ride with the windows down. This is, this is right here. here on the out the edge of the city limits that is the city limits what you're looking at in the town i live in a Cherville, north carolina up here in northwest gaston county and now i'm going to show you just how close to home it is so you'll not you'll know i ain't uh, exaggerating none well you know this is what used to be the old carolina freight trucking company which was one of the biggest independent trucking companies in the world but uh it went out of business in the 90s so we're going to show you how close to my house this actually is and, and it's you can all you got to do is walk out on my back deck if you really want to see the smoke or the front deck for that matter you can see i mean you can just look up the road yonder and just see the the haze and the smokiness just are rolling in. Now, we'll catch this red light, but you'll see exactly how close it is to my house. So I want to ask you to offer, if you, if you believe in that type of thing, ask the good Lord to send us some rain and be with them farming and the people that this is impacting here in Western North Carolina. Uh, 
this, if you believe in that, this offer up a prayer to the good Lord that he'll send us some rain or help them get this under containment. But, uh, you'll see how close it is. Now, I mean, I'm literally about five seconds from turning up my neighborhood street. But that's where it's at. And catching fish ain't all important. And I'm going to end the video here in just a second with another a uh, little bit of heartbreaking news. It's unfortunate. Give me one second and I'll be right happy. That's how close it is to my house, right yonder, folks. I mean, I live right up here. Right yonder is my house where the flags are flying. So I'm going to stop this video and back my truck up. And, uh, and I'll come right back. Alright, so moral of the story is as good as we always want to do when we go fishing, that's any of us. It's not always the most important thing. Uh, and this has definitely put some things in perspective for me. Um, so I just ask for you to, if you believe in that kind of thing, and if you don't, I, not a hating on you, not a judging you, just uh, if you believe in that type of thing, I ask you to pray for this uh, area of North Carolina. I think some of it's down in northern Georgia and southern Ten uh, southern Virginia and parts of Tennessee, too. I ain't got no idea, but uh, I just ask you all for prayer up for all the farm and the fire departments and the rangers and everybody that's fighting it and all the families that live up yonder and down in here. We hope it don't get down in here. I know i seen reports last night that uh, about five miles up above my house here at Mount Zion Church, I as a part of it got in there. I know there's some ashes on my back of my truck. This morning I come out here and looked and there was some ashes uh, on the bed liner. Uh, the other thing I want to share with you is a uh, carp community, carp fishing community lost a good man uh, over the weekend, last weekend. Uh, Raymond Walker, he passed away and I don't know if any of you know him by name, but you'll know him when I tell you this. He was the owner and founder of R&W Carp Juice. Uh, Raymond passed away and uh, definitely a big loss to the carp community. He lost to me and the possum. Uh, that man was always good to us. Him and his son, Mark, they was always good to us. There was times whenever my wife would be there and, and, and would need to pick something up for me while he'd know exactly what I needed and help her out and be nice to her and treat her with respect and courtesy. A Raymond shop owned of Yonder and Lincoln and, and that's about eight miles from my house. Um, and I ain't been in touch with, I tried to call Mark I think the day before yesterday and uh, didn't get no answer and I wasn't pressing and pushing on him because uh, I'm sure he's overwhelmed with phone calls and messages and stuff. But I'd like to ask for you, if, if you would, to uh, offer a prayer for the Walker family and losing a father and a, a husband and a brother and uh, a good, good friend to a lot of us carp fishermen around here, the hotbed of carp fishermen in North Carolina. Uh, so uh, rest in peace, Raymond. We love you. Thank you for what you did for the carp fishing community when you opened up R&W in the early 1990s. And uh, prayers to the Walker family. We appreciate you. And we, we ask the good Lord to touch you and be with you over these uh, next little while, especially approaching the holidays. We know you're going to miss old Raymond something fierce. But... Uh, that's all for today. I don't mean to get real sentimental on you and uh, long-faced and pouty, pouty lip, but uh, sometimes things is a little more important than going carp fishing or, or even winning at the carp lake. And I hope you all will take this video to heart and offer up prayers if you believe in that kind of thing. Um, don't know when we'll get back to the lake, but uh, hopefully we'll be filming soon. I appreciate you staying till the end. And uh, remember when you go fishing, and what I just showed you is a good example of it. Leave it better than you found it. The least little bit of thing can cause a great big issue. And if we try to do that, and we try to be proactive with how we treat nature, we don't have to be reactive. And if you leave it better than you find it, well, then we'll have a 
clean, safe environment to fish in for years to come. Remember, the best things come to those who bait this Jimbo on behalf of the possums at the schoolhouse. Team Country Boys Outdoors signing off for till next time. We appreciate you. Stay tuned for episode two coming soon, hopefully. All right, guys.